What's going on everybody? I'm Dory Goodman of The Time Teller. Happy Friday or whenever you're watching this. It really doesn't matter. And do we even really know what day it is anyway right now? Uh, okay, so according to my G-Shock Mudmaster, it is Friday. Thank you. But realistically, it could be any time or day. Everything's a blur. And that's exactly why I'm not going to be ranting today. I'm actually going to be talking about something really upbeat and really positive and something I'm super duper passionate about. So guys, recently I've been talking about various quartz watches, um, most, you know, fairly affordable, some more expensive, like my Seiko Tuna, but um, I've gotten multiple comments from some of my viewers, and they're like, hey, T3, I'm super duper excited about you mentioning quartz watches lately. Looks like you're coming around, and I'm like, C coming around to what? I... I I love quartz watches. And then I looked at my grab and go watches, my everyday watches, and I realized, holy cow, two out of the three of my nightstand watches, like the watches I keep on my nightstand that I wear regularly, are like battery powered. So two out of three, I, I guess I am officially a quartz wearer. So I'm not really coming around to anything. I love quartz watches. So guys, here's why I wear quartz watches every day and why maybe you should too. So recently I made an episode, uh, everything I wish I knew before buying a quartz watch and maybe watch that episode first. But today we're gonna be talking about why I personally wear one uh, as my everyday grab and go watch. Now, again, I also made an episode last month uh, titled why I wear a Rolex every day and no I don't own a Rolex Oyster Quartz even though I'd love to uh, and it's true my Rolex Date 1500 uh, one of my all-time favorite everyday grab-and-go watches that is automatic uh, but again uh, my Seiko Tuna and my G-Shock Mudmaster or my G-Shock DW 6600 uh, those are also technically battery powered this is solar powered uh, but again that Sun charges a battery Battery. So, yeah, hey guys, looks like looks like I wear battery-powered watches. <laughs> T3, you have forsaken us. I thought you were a watch collector. I thought you were an urologist. Oh my God, I had a stroke trying to say urologist. <sighs> it's 12:53 p.m. Let's get down to business. Right, guys why I wear a quartz watch every day and why you might want to consider one for yourself now guys this is gonna be a five-point episode while I'm listing my points go ahead and tell me in the comment section below why or why not you'd wear a quartz watch every day like subscribe hit that bell icon and let's get into it number one they're convenient right kind of a no-brainer I can just pick them up and go they're always running and I don't have to set them guys that is so 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 nice I love mechanical watches I love my hand wind movements my automatic movements but I don't have all of my mechanical watches on watch winders and I'm not constantly hand winding my manual watches by by hand every it's, it, it would be impossible for me to do that with the amount of watches I have oh he's bragging he's just not chill guys you know what I'm trying to say I'm simply saying that having a few quartz watches on my nightstand is just a lifesaver. I can wake up, get ready, get washed up, grab my watch, put it on the wrist, and leave. And sometimes, when I'm strapped for time, that's very nice. The second reason I wear a quartz watch every day is because it doesn't matter if I'm hitting the trails with Connie on a hike, doesn't matter if I'm going for a jog, doesn't matter if I'm going to the gym, doesn't matter if I'm working on my Jeep or taking my Jeep off-road. They're just super duper resilient in comparison to a mechanical watch. Listen, I think a lot of mechanical watches are tougher than we give them credit for, but bottom line, Quartz watches have less moving parts and they have less to go wrong. And because of that, just bottom line, quartz watches, very, very resilient. And piggybacking off of that point brings us to point three. I wear a quartz watch every day because they're low maintenance. Now hear me out. A lot of quartz watches are not serviceable. For instance, my DW6600, it's not solar powered. It has pretty much no moving parts. It's a G-Shock, a very basic early G-Shock from the 90s. If that breaks, a watchmaker can't really do anything to it outside of 
maybe giving it a new screen and you know replacing the battery and maybe sealing things up but pretty much a watchmaker is just going to tell you to buy a new one but there are some quartz watches that can be serviced for instance uh, this g-shock mudmaster i've recently learned you can send back to casio and they actually might be able to service this one i know for a fact my seiko sbbn 031 tuna is fully serviceable so there are a few that are very serviceable but again even though are super low maintenance in comparison to my mechanical watches that have a ton of little parts working together in perfect harmony and uh, oh so much to go wrong. <laughs> so yeah guys when it comes to dependability, reliability, and just ease of wear quartz watches are the way to go but we're not done yet because point four which is actually one that a lot of people overlook is the fact that when you wear a quartz watch every day especially when you're a watch collector hanging out with a bunch of other watches in your collection you have an immediate precise time source with which you can set all your other watches to. It is so nice. That's right guys, I brought it up before. Quartz watches, whether you like it or not, are more consistently accurate uh, when it comes to measuring time than you know most mechanical movements. So it's very nice when you're a watch collector hanging out with a bunch of various watches to pick up a quartz watch, put it on your wrist, and have a nice, accurate, precise time source when you're going to set all these various watches. It's just, again, super convenient. So I guess all of the points on my list can kind of be reduced to quartz watches just being super, super convenient, but uh, I figured I'd break it up. So this one, yeah, it's just a very nice, accurate, consistent time source. Which brings us to the fifth and final point when it comes to the reasons I wear quartz watches most days of the week, and it's because they feel kind of different and high tech. And I know this is kind of something you have to understand when you wear the watches, but my Seiko Tuna is so very different than a lot of my other watches in my collection. It feels nice. It's almost refreshing when I pick up this watch. Don't get me wrong, I love high beat movements. I, the smoother the sweep, the nicer the watch, in my opinion, right? Well, it's really fun to contrast that with a watch that's just super chunky and robust, like my Seiko Tuna, the, the high torque quartz movement, moving those huge, robust hands. They literally had to develop that movement in order to move those enormous, very vibrant, very robust hands that that watch uses. It's just really bad. Badass, and it's just very, I don't know, industrial in a way. And it's kind of counterintuitive because you'd think the more mechanical something is, the more industrial it is. But when you look at the Seiko Tuna and you look at its just precise, stubborn, ticking, it's, I don't know, again, this, this last point is maybe kind of specific to myself and it's kind of hard to convey. Uh, you gotta spend some time with these quartz watches to really appreciate them, but it's that stubborn precision and the unwavering movement that I really, really love. And even with this uh, G-Shock Mudmaster, again, this is one of my nightstand watches. It's very fun to see all the things it does and to see it stubbornly ticking away. I suppose if your mechanical watches are in good health, they will also stubbornly tick away at a very uh, you know, high rate uh, in comparison to a quartz very low beat tick. I don't want to get this, I don't want to, I don't, excuse me, I don't want to get it twisted, okay? I love mechanical watches. The majority of my collection is either manual or automatic, but I have love for quartz watches. And again, two out of the three watches that I have on my nightstand are battery powered. So those of you accusing me of being a snob or of overlooking quartz movements, and those of you who are kind of surprised that recently I'm talking about various quartz watches, um, you might be surprised how, how much experience I have with them. Because again, I wear them every day. So guys, again, leave me that comment. List some reasons why or why not you would wear a quartz watch. And uh, yeah, I'm sure some people will still call me a snob for even mentioning some of the watches that I own. But who cares? Uh, we can't satisfy everyone. And guys, I wanna thank you so much for getting me past 97,000 subscribers. Things are moving so fast. 100,000 right around the corner. Uh, man, I never thought we would get here. Guys, I just wanted to bring something up and I'm sure when I hit 100,000, if I hit 100,000, I don't wanna celebrate just yet. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna mention this as well. I'll never forget, when I made my first episode of my Rolex Bubbleback 2940, I kinda made that episode on a whim. I didn't really anticipate where this channel would go or where it could go. I just kind of 
made that episode because one of my best friends, who also is a watch collector, um, found out that I got that watch and they were like, hey, you know, there's not a lot of information about that watch on the internet, why don't you film a little review? Uh, so I kind of filmed that episode just so he could watch it. And so Patrick, I know you're watching this episode. Uh, you're my best friend. Thank you so much for um, kind of poking me and, and prodding me so that I could finally just be like, I, I was resistant. I was resistant to filming a YouTube episode because I was like, no one's gonna watch. And he was like, no, I, I just want that information. He's back in New England. I'm here in LA. He's one of my, my buddies that I grew up with. So it was just kind of easy for me to do a review, put it on YouTube so that he could watch it and learn more about the watch that, that I acquired. And I remember I was so excited when I got 42 subscribers. Uh, I just couldn't believe that after I uploaded that, 42 people like enjoyed that so much that they like signed up to see more. And I was like, whoa, that's okay. 42, oh, that's okay, I'll make another episode. And then I made another episode and then some more people joined in. And then I made another episode and some more people joined in. And I, I mean, 97,000 people. It just, it still doesn't really make sense to me <laughs> is, is, what, is what I'm trying to get at. But um, I'm very blessed, I'm very lucky, and I'm, I'm just so happy. So I don't wanna celebrate prematurely. Uh, I, I am still trying to keep my wits about me, but I just can't, I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. 97,000 subscriber. I, I, I feel like this is the home stretch. I feel like we're almost there and I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna rest on my laurels when, once, if and when I hit 100,000. But um, I just wanna let you know that even if we stop right here, which we won't, this has exceeded my expectations and I couldn't have done any of the things I've done the last couple years without you guys, so thank you, thank you. Even if you're a brand new subscriber, even if you're watching this episode and you haven't subscribed yet, please, I consider, the, you know, I urge you to consider subscribing, but um, I wanna thank you for, for joining us on this trip. So guys, thank you. I love you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. 100,000, I'm coming for you. <laughs>